this is Amy. Welcome back to Table Flipping Housewife. Today I'll be restoring this beautiful dresser I picked up from Facebook Marketplace for $40. I love the details on this dresser and I even like the hardware that I end up reusing. But as you can see, there are problems with the drawers. So let's get busy. that I bought this from told me her two sons broke this and repaired it, repaired it. It looks like some sort of maybe Gorilla Glue and then even plain staples. So I'm going to use a heat gun to soften the glue, take out what I can, and then take out the staples. Let's see what happens. After heating it for a long period of time, the glue did soften and I was able to pick it out a little bit at a time. All right, I'll heat up that some more and then take it off. Okay, so last night I sanded the drawer fronts down to bare wood. I used a 80 grit sandpaper on my surf prep. Then I used a 150 grit sandpaper. Just now on the drawers, I used 180, and then I'm going to follow up with the 220. While I'm at it, I'm also going to sand the base of the dresser with the 220 also. I need to sand the areas where I puttied for dings. Uh, I also need to scuff sand it, because here's my plan. I'm going to be painting the base of the dresser a dark color. And for the drawer fronts, I want to stain it with paint. And I've never done that before. But ultimately, what I'm looking for is an old weathered look. So um, I'm going to have to play around with some paints that I have to see if I can achieve that with a paint stain. I do want to show you something, though. This is the drawer. See, now I have to look at it. <laughs> okay. This is the drawer that had that horrible broken piece that had been terribly glued back together. Um, so this is, you can see a faint line right there, but only because you're looking for it. I think once I stain with paint, you're not gonna be able to see it. And you certainly can't feel a thing. It is smooth as a baby's bottom. Now the back, this is where I had a really big gap and I sanded that last night. Let's see, can you see it? Yeah, I sanded that last night and I think it looks beautiful. When you rub your hand against it, you can't feel that either. So I'm very pleased with the repair. Now, when I list this on Facebook Marketplace to sell it, I will let the um, market know that this has had a broken drawer that I've repaired. I think that's fair to know. But anyway, I'm gonna get busy. Yesterday, I brushed on bleach three separate times to the drawer fronts. I'm not so sure it made much of a difference. One thing that I have noticed is that because the wood was wet with the bleach, the um, they need to be sanded now because the wood fibers have kind of 
pulled up a little bit after having been wet. So I'm going to sand this down with 220 and then do the color wash. To use my paint wash, I'm going to use Dixie Belle's sand bar and I'm going to use equal parts paint to water. So I'm going to use a paintbrush to brush it on. I have lint free rags ready. All right, it's the first time I've done this. This is fun. So you paint it on. You don't want to leave it on, leave it on too long, but you need to leave it on long enough for it to absorb into the wood a little bit. So let's see what that's going to end up being. Oops. I should have put tape on the underside of those drawer pull holes. Okay. Amy. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go wipe it off in one direction and you go with the grain. Ooh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Ooh, I like that. Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Wow, that's fun. So I'm trying a new paint this time. Uh, it's Valspar cabinet and furniture paint. It is a water-based paint, so you can still clean your brushes with soap and water, but it's oil enriched enamel. And I'll be honest, I don't know what that means. But from what I understand, it performs with the durability of oil paint, but with the ease of being a water-based paint. Now, um, I was introduced to this by watching Shannon over at Black Sheep House. If you have not checked her YouTube channel out, you need to, she's amazing. She paints furniture for a living and she has some rather unconventional methods to painting that have been very intriguing to me. I've learned a lot from her and I know you will too. So if you're not familiar with her, you need to head over there. The reason she was has been so intrigued with this paint is that like the rest of us furniture painters, we've all noticed that when we paint with a dark color, it's very hard to put a top coat on it without the top coat streaking. We're over it. And um, this paint she has discovered is incredibly durable. It does have a built-in primer like so many of the um, furniture paint out there, but to be honest with you, so far I have not met a furniture paint, top coat included or not, that doesn't need to be top coated. I'm hoping this will be the exception because I'm really struggling to put a top coat on my dark painted pieces. Wouldn't it be fabulous if this actually could be a black paint that we can use without the necessity to seal it. The drawback or the flip side, however, is that this paint takes 30 days to fully cure. So it'll dry, takes a little bit longer to dry, she says, than normal paints, but it'll feel dry to the touch after um, a few hours, but may scratch if handled. So what I'm going to do, I think the trade-off is worth it. If this actually is a black, I can use without top coating it. So what I'm gonna do after I finish this is I'm going to store it for about three weeks before I list it on Facebook Marketplace. And that'll give it time to properly seal. So I am hand painting the outer edge of the drawers and I'll be spraying the rest of the dresser hopefully later this week, I'm excited. Excited to try something new. So this is the first coat and I wholeheartedly expect to need at least one more. I sanded the edges with 220 grit sandpaper um, and in the areas where I went down to raw wood I did spray them with some shellac based primer by Zinger Bin and then lightly scuffed it just a smidge. 
so that it's um, it'll it won't be a shiny spot where your paint will adhere differently. Today in the Atlanta area, it is 29 degrees. It even feels colder than that. And even in our enclosed garage, it's way too cold. So my husband says, well, if you're going to be brushing it on, why don't you paint in our den? You'll be more comfortable. And then that way you can watch YouTube videos while you're painting. Y'all, he's been so supportive. I just couldn't believe it. He said this one time. So here we go. This is going on really, really nicely. Um, and you can hear I'm listening to Shannon's video while I do this. So what she does is she does the outside frame, or edges, and then she paints it on. She works in sections. I hope it's not distracting that she's talking in the background, but I'm listening to it again for the umpteenth time for a little encouragement. But she just brushes it on like this. This paint is really yummy. It's going on, mm, it's real slick. It, it feels um, kind of slippery. I don't know. Okay, so here we go. Then she takes her roller and she starts to blend it. You want a dry roller brush, or roller foam rather. And the trick is to do this while the paint is still wet and hasn't dried yet. This is really yummy. Yummy paint. I'm going to keep going. I thought I heard something drip, but it didn't. just it goes on I think it has real smoothly I think it has really good coverage I mean I, I've only been at this let's see 24 minutes and with the exception of the top and the very bottom I'm um, I'm almost done with my first coat I could hand paint with this paint anytime so maybe this paint has reconverted me back to enjoy brush painting. For a while I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just spray everything, but this is fun. This is what it looks like with just one coat. You can see some streakiness, but for a black, I think it's going on really well. It says to wait, I think it said eight hours before applying another coat. Since I don't plan 
to top coat this. I think I've decided to actually do three coats. That way, whatever protection is in the paint will um, just add more durability to the surface. So I need to fix the drawer issue. Two of the drawers needed new sockets like this one. So I'll show you how I replaced the ones that needed replacing. So I'm gonna take those off, this one off, and replace it. Super easy. So we'll just take these out. I'm gonna save the screws. And this one's gonna go right in its place. And you see this one now has little hands that are gonna hold on to that metal glide inside the dresser. So it goes down like this. Okay. And let's screw this back in. Okay, isn't that easy? Okay, so here's the metal glide. And as you can see, the one that was attached to the drawer originally had the pieces broken that would wrap around here. So now the drawer socket that I put in is like this. It slides along this metal glide and it won't rock. So it'll secure the drawer in place. So now it goes in and as you pull it out, it's secured in place, it won't come down. Yay. What I didn't include is that I thoroughly cleaned the hardware. I thought it was very interesting. I wanted to use it again. I cleaned it and then I put three coats of flat black paint on it, followed up by a clear matte varnish to help seal it.